Computers are all around us, in offices, computer shops, and computer repair shops. It's hard to think of anything that doesn't have a computer in it, except cows, and they've probably got computers in them now. Computers have become part of our culture. Scenes like this are commonplace. You have to ask the question, are we looking at the computers or are the computers looking at us? Even though the answer to that question is obvious, it sounds spooky. The computer was invented by Charles Babbage in 1822, but it didn't have a screen so no one knew what it was doing. Conrad Zoos managed to invent a proper one in Germany in 1936, but that one got bombed up by the British. And that meant we could invent it first again, thanks to a man called Alan Turing here at Bletchley Parks in War II. Unlike today's computers, this early computer is made of transistors and pipes. And as you can see, it's absolutely huge. And the mouse has gone missing, but it must have been the size of a car. The invention of the computer was of primary benefit to one particular group of people. Video game players. Oh. Until computers, they'd had to play the games using a pen and paper or coloured bits of dough. A game of Pac-Man could take three days just to set up if the peas kept rolling off the table. The computer changed all that. There's almost nothing a person can do that a computer can't except ride a horse. So lots of jobs have been replaced by computers. Perhaps one day we'll have a computer queen with the real queen just used for the bits that are on a horse. In the future, I'd be able to ask a computer about computers, but for now, I'll have to speak to a human who is an expert in computers. So, are you a computer expert? I'm Dr Sean Holden and I'm a senior lecturer in computer science at Cambridge University. Will there ever come a time where we need two mouses to work a computer? I don't think so. I think it's more likely that there'll be a time when you don't need any mouses. Things are moving now towards touch screens, gesture recognition, um, brain-computer interfaces. So what's that? It's where you can sense um, to an extent uh, what someone is thinking. Like Darren Brown? Not as well as that. Right. Well, not yet, anyway. Paul McKenna. You might be able to make the, uh, the cursor, say, the mouse pointer go left or right. Just by, by thinking, thinking, go right. Yeah, that's about where the technology is. But how can it do that? How will it know? I don't understand. It's possible to get some information about what your brain is doing by things like encephalograms. Encephal done in a hospital. What? Encephalograms. Say it again. Encephalograms. Say it again. Encephalograms. Right. So you can get some information about what your thoughts are doing through, through that kind of interface, which maybe means you're sticking electrodes on your head at the moment. Yeah. But it's early days. That's amazing, isn't it? Would you get one of those? Yeah, why not? Yeah, why not? Alan Turing, the weird man who discovered computers, is now a national hero, and people queue for ages to touch the Turing shroud. There are even computers made of cloud now. What next? A computer you can eat or fight? Computer music? Who knows? It's enough to make you wonder. Next time on Moments of Wonder, I'll be asking where your lap goes when you stand up. <laughs>